that song and the anointing of God's presence that it brought. Why don't you just worship the Lord right there where you are today? My goodness, he's worthy of our praise. Let's just take a praise break right now and declare, Lord, you are worthy. Our hearts are glad and then our spirits are thankful indeed for all of your goodness unto us. All of your great works, we declare your glory, not only in this studio, but all across the land, around the world, in the powerful name of Jesus Christ, yes. our Lord. Amen. Well, please join Joni and me as we welcome a man that has God has used in such amazing ways, prophetically, around the world. He has spoken in our nation's capital. He's written best-selling books. God has given him insights into the Bible, in, into prophecy. His name is Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. Let's welcome him back to the program today. I got a kid, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn, because he's our buddy, and we can do this. But, uh, there was a uh -oh. golfer named Gary Player that was called the Man in Black. <laughs> and there was the great singer, Rebecca and I, we'll still sing a little bit. I fell into a burning ring yes. of fire. Cash. Johnny yes. Cash. Yeah. And then the rabbi in black. <laughs> the rabbi Jonathan in black. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's better than the con yell you did the, the last hey, didn't time. didn't you like that? That was so cool. I did. In Star Trek. I did. I William did. Shatner. I'll take it. Out you know, black is like love. It covers a multitude of sins. Okay. <laughs> Listen, Joni tells me all the time, every woman needs to have about five pairs of black pants. Slacks, yes. Slacks. Okay, yes. It's a little bit different. Yeah. Okay. Listen, everybody knows about mm -hmm. the, the best-selling book, The Harbinger, and uh, there's a video, a DVD, The Harbinger Decoded. He has all of these resources and more. But my question to you is, mm -hmm. Go ahead and take your little sip while I read the question. That is what has been happening in terms of yeah. Bible prophecy since you were here last. Yeah, a lot has been happening and a lot has happened in America and it's very profound. We need to be aware of it. And uh, one thing is that, you know, uh, I always say, you'll always hear me say this and I'll always give a caution. I, and I know we're going to talk about the prophetic jubilee this time. But always the caution, God is on the th God is sovereign, he can do as he pleases, we cannot put him in a box, we can't put a date on things. However, now so having said that, since last time, what happened in the Shemitah is actually very significant, because now we're in the <coughs> prophetic period here, of the prophetic Shemitah. But what happened actually is this, first of all, one of the signs of the Shemitah is that there's a shift, there's often a shift in history of power. 140 years ago, the American age began when America became the strongest economic power on earth, supplanted the British Empire. This has been 140 years. That 140 year period came to an end with the Shemitah. The, this Shemitah ended. America is no longer the strongest economic power on earth. I've warned of that for a long time. It, the crown has passed to China. That's one thing. Gigantic. All right, you must give a quick definition of Shemitah. Yes. Because some people don't yes. know what that is. The Shemitah is the seven-year period, the seven-year the seven-year mystery when and it kind of means the fall when you when you at that time you've had some of the most major crashes or changes of history at that time. That the Sabbath year. The other thing is that when people focus on days, they often miss something, and that is that the overall pattern of the Shemitah is that the, the stock market begins to descend in a long, month-long descent. Well, that is exactly what happened this time. It manifested. Uh, spring, it reached its peak, it began to descend up until the time of the end of the Shemitah. When it reached the last month, which is a lul, you know, the lul 29, when it reached that time, you had the world markets went actually collapsed. You had it produced two of the greatest day crashes in world history, produced Black Monday, which is the greatest intraday crash in world history. It actually wiped out uh, 4,000 points from the Indian markets, 12,000 from Brazilian markets, two trillion, not billion, of um, the American markets. Eleven trillion dollars were wiped out of the world markets, and the the engine of the world economy is now China. 
China <laughs> lost 42% of their of their realm. I mean, it wiped out wow. 42%. And up to the end of the Shemitah. So what I'm saying here is now now the principles of judgment, more than that happened, There's, we're going to get, uh, we'll get into some very, very profound things. But America is still progressing towards judgment away from God. I mean, America is racing. Let me interject this. Yeah. China now holds 21% of America's debt. 21 amazing amazing and in the bible debt is a symbol you know what israel says you know if you follow me you'll lend to many nations you will not borrow but if you turn from me well what's happened to america we were the greatest creditor nation on earth but as we turned away from god we've become the greatest debtor nation this is a house of wow. cards house of cards so there have been several things and in the moral or spiritual realm this year was was gigantic because 1973 was the year of the Shemitah. That's the year that America legalized the killing of unborn children. Hmm. This year, something else happened. Gigantic, gigantic. And, I, and this is very important to know. In the Bible, there's a principle called the <coughs> act of desecration. And that is before judgment, there's an act of where something is desecrated. Desecration is when you take something holy and you desecrate it. Uh, and what happened is, you remember uh, Daniel in Babylon. He's in the, in the palace of Babylon. And the, the, the king, though, t he calls for a celebration of celebrating to the gods. He says, bring out the vessels of Jerusalem, the vessels of the temple, and we're going to celebrate with God's vessels. Well, they do. They celebrate the, the, to the gods of Babylon. They drink out of God's vessels. This is an act of desecration. At that moment, the handwriting appears on the wall. Now, the judgment is going to come. The act of desecration begin is preceding judgment okay so now what is, desecration when you take something holy and you turn it for an unholy purpose well marriage is also a holy vessel of god as much as the vessels of the temple as much and what happened is so here what happened in america during this shemitah and shemitah also means the fall what happened is you had the striking down of marriage as we know it, the striking mm. down of the biblical definition of marriage. This is gigantic. We crossed the line. This yes. is an act of desecration. And, but not only that, what, the, another thing is that when that happened, <coughs> another holy vessel is the rainbow. The rainbow belongs to God, not man. It, it's God's holy symbol of 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 his covenant. What happened? When, when marriage was struck down, it was celebrated all over America, with the sign of the rainbow, the desecration of the other, it was a double desecration. And then that night, the president orders the White House to be lit up, first time in, in the history that, that I can ever remember, not red, white, and blue, but in the colors of the rainbow to celebrate the destruction of marriage. Yeah, that you see right there, that is a triple desecration. That's the, that's the White House now becoming a vessel of that. So these are three desecrations in one day. I told uh, our producer of this program, I said, George Washington probably turned over in his grave if he was aware of that. I mean, that's just, that's just shocking that, that our government, our Supreme Court, and our yeah. president, and our judges would stoop so low. It's just, I cannot yes. even believe that, that, that this is America. You know, yep. you prefaced all of this by saying that as Christians, as believers, we have that blessed hope. So we don't share all of this to bring fear. That's right. But we, we share it to, to help you to understand that we need to pray. That's right. And I do believe that revival is coming to this generation. Mm -hmm. God is going to do. We'll talk more about yes. that. But I have to tell you, on the day that the Supreme Court mm -hmm. made that judgment, yes. I mean, in my spirit, I was so grieved. And it was so interesting to me how there were so many Christians that were lackadaisical and were like, oh, that's no big deal. We don't have to worry about that. Let's just, but I knew that it, there was something deeper mm. in the spirit realm that had taken yes, place was. as a result of that. Yes, well, I want to yes, say, I want to interject yes. this too. Let's just call it what it is. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's interesting that in the 2008 presidential campaign, both uh, then-Senator Barack Obama and uh, then-Senator Hillary Clinton, remember she was Senator of New York, mm -hmm. both said mm -hmm. that they were against same-sex marriage and that the definition of marriage was between one man and one woman. Yes. What happened? Yeah. What happened? Once they got elected, 
Oh, I just, I didn't really mean that. It's called political correctness. I mean, that, that yeah. is what is the same political reason. Political expediency. The same reason why Hillary Clinton won't call, uh, won't call Islamic uh, radicals. Uh, Neither you know, will President you know, Obama. What they are. Yeah, radical Islam. They yeah. won't yeah. say it. It's like, oh, I don't know what that word is. I, that's not in my my vocabulary. Yeah, this is, I mean, this is the same pattern that ancient Israel went through. This is a nation that Israel knew God. It was founded by God, but then <laughs> turned away. And as it kept going, started calling what was sin as if it was holy and what is holy as evil. And that's exactly where we are. And that, the same thing happened. It's not an accident that now we're witnessing believers actually being thrown in jail, you know, for simply saying, I can't go along with this. I mean, we have, we have crossed lines. This is the template of the harbinger continuing, and this is defiance before God. I'll tell you something else with this. You know, there's a date on the biblical calendar which marked the day when the hedge of Jerusalem's protection was broken. The hedge was broken when Babylon did that first wall. It's, it's, a, it's called the Ninth of Tammuz. It's a, it's, a, it's a fasting day. So this is what, it removed the hedge and then judgment came. That day is the Ninth of Tammuz. The day that, that marriage was struck down was the Ninth of Tammuz, the morning day on the biblical calendar My when goodness. the hedge is removed that protects a nation. All right, now I want to ask this question because I don't want I don't want to sit over here and be <coughs> depressed myself. No, <laughs> and I'm sure our viewers don't. Is that woe is me, doom and gloom and despair? We're all going to hell in a handbasket. No. America's going to no. be destroyed. Is there hope? Is there some good news in the midst <laughs> yes. of all of this despair? Yeah, yeah. And I, <laughs> we have to be aware. Number one, we as watchmen, we have to be aware of the signs. Yeah, as long as there is God, there is hope. As long as there's God, always. And in fact, you know, when I've shown this before, that, that I don't believe there would be any harbingers if there wasn't hope. Because what's the point of warning if there's no hope of, of turning? Good point. The thing, in fact, in fact, I believe that if there wasn't a shaking or there wasn't shaking coming, there wouldn't be hope. Most of us came to the Lord because we were shaken. I, I came to the Lord because I was hit by a locomotive train. I wouldn't be saved if it wasn't for that train. Most of it, and the same with nations too. America has grown so deafened. I'm not talking about the believers, but I'm, I'm, some of them, yes. But yeah. but the culture has grown so defined. We gotta we gotta call it what it is. But that it will take God shouting now. And so the thing is that I believe that the warnings and these things that happen are actually the the hope we have because I believe I believe there can be revival, but it's not going to come easy. I believe there will be revival. There can be revival, but it will come through shaking and it'll come through the voice of God calling. And I believe absolutely. And what about our viewers today? What can they do? What should they be doing? Well, one of the things is, is first of all, we have to realize this. You know, these are the day, last days. People think that it's just days of darkness. It's not. There's dark and light. In the end times, the dark gets darker, but the lights have to get brighter. And so what happens in the end times is the grays disappear. The middle ground disappears. It's not that nominal Christianity will disappear. It's going to become radical one way or the other. If the dark is getting darker, it's time for the lights of God to get brighter. This is not the time to be silent, not the time to compromise, not the time to fear, not the time to be weak. This is the time to be all the more sold out to God because you know we always talked about we want to live in biblical times these are biblical times the end these these are the same times that Paul lived in same times that Elijah lived in you know and yet it produces the greatest Christians the greatest believers if we will be the the, the dark is getting radical we have to get radical for God. And the, you know, so the, the promise is God says, it says, the eyes of the Lord search the entire earth looking for the one whose heart is completely his, that he will lift up that one. He'll show himself mighty. Well, we have to be that one. You be that one. God will protect. You know, remember something else. If you want know one Hebrew word, the word for salvation or safety is Yeshua. That's Jesus. If you're in Yeshua, you don't have, don't fear. If you're in your ship, but if you're not in, get in him, get in him, and you don't have to fear. Okay, it is a fact that light does appear to be the brightest when it's the darkest. Absolutely. What a great opportunity. Pastor Rod Parsley called me last night, and we were talking about some of this, and I brought this up to him. I said, it's always been in the most difficult situations that has caused men right. to turn to God. So this can be the church's finest hour and your finest hour as well. So I want you to be encouraged today. And the other thing that I advocate is this, because people talk about, well, is there going to be a rapture? And if there is, 
Is it before the tribulation? Is it in the middle of the tribulation? Is it at the end of the tribulation? But see, I agree with what Rabbi Jonathan Kahn said. As long as you are a believer and you are in Christ, you don't have to worry about it. Because regardless of when it is, you're with the Lord and he's going to take care of you and he's going to protect you. Now, I want to give you an opportunity. If you have a question for Rabbi Jonathan Kahn, go to the phone and call or go to daystar.com and click on questions, and we may even take a, a call live over there. Joni, do you got some questions? I do, have, I do have some questions that have come in. Um, here is someone saying, will the third temple be built before the last seven years prior to Jesus returning? Uh, I believe it has to be. I don't. I mean, build first of all. The first, the temple in the time of Jesus took forty something years. I believe it could happen much quicker, but it's there in place. You know, it's all in Daniel it speaks of that last that seven year period. In the middle of that period, the temple will be desecrated. So it has to be there. Really, it has to be there at the beginning. So yes, I believe that's one of the key things that Temple Mount. And by the way, we are. I know we'll get into it later. We're in the prophetic jubilee, which can be linked to that. But the temple has to be restored. Has to be restored before the end. Yeah. Absolutely. So in other words, you can't desecrate a temple that's not there. <laughs> that, absolutely. And it's not going to happen okay. in a second. Yes. Okay. Yes. Let's, uh, here's another good question that says, um, what does Rabbi Khan think about the presidential election in 2016? How important is that? Uh, very. I mean, every election is important, but, but we, what we have had in the last, in the last period is we've had a major and acceleration of America's turn from God and without godly leaders I mean it's not just the leader it's it's us but without that if we have another period of leaders who are seeking to move America accelerate America from God away from God we are going to be in such deep trouble so yes it means something the the president isn't the only it isn't the only thing it's us but the president you know god gives godly leaders he also gives he also allows for ungodly leaders or leaders who will go against it but the leader can be a judgment as well so we need to pray i mean we you know it's a polarization you know it's not the same on both sides and i'm not this is not here to be political but there is gigantic differences between one party and another party and there are born again believers on one, on one party right now very much and there are those who have who have positions that are clearly against the word of God. So yes, it matters. And, and yet we need to pray. You know, we don't put our hope in politics, but we are the light. We have to be a light upon the world and we should affect this world in any way we can. And that's one of them is that realm. So yes, we need to be praying. People say there's no difference. There is a very big difference. Okay, well, you know, I know, uh, Jonathan, that there are people that have watched you on Table Talk with me, yes. they've watched you here on Marcus and Joni and other networks as well. And you talk so much about the Shemitah and how mm -hmm. important it was yes. for 2015, the blood moons, all of those mm -hmm. things. So for people who are watching, I know we talked about some of it earlier, but could you just kind of go through a laundry list of the significant things yeah. that happened? Sure. Because Sure. Were they different sure. than what you thought they were going to be? Um, or? You know, you know, I've always, every time we talk, Johnny, I always say, you know, that, you know, again, you know, you cannot say God has to do something in one way. But, right. the, and the cycle can be stronger or, or less or different. But what happened is, what, what happened this past Shemitah is that actually the, the, the most prevalent pattern of the Shemitah took place. And that is that we saw the stock market crashing for about several months, including one of the, some of the worst days in the history of the stock market. But at the same time of the peak of the Shemitah, up to the end of the Shemitah, that was Elul, that was August. That was Elul of the Shemitah. We also saw, not only that, we, we, saw, we saw also the end of the American age as the strongest economic power on earth. That, was, that happened, that was replaced this year by China. This is 140 years of history came to an end. Shemitah means fall. It's seen the rise and fall of nations. Also, you have a spiritual fall. We said 1973 was the year of a gigantic fall, and that was a Shemitah year when we legalized the killing of children or the unborn children. Well, this one has seen another one, and that is the, the destruction of marriage, another gigantic fall. So yes, things have accelerated. It was a very, very significant year. Okay, here is a Jack that's watching us in Michigan. Is Turkey or Russia 
uh, a country that you believe will eventually be attacking Israel and and or who do you think is going to eventually be attacked? Yeah, well, that, yeah, that's in Ezekiel 38 and 39. And Ezekiel 38 and 39 speaks specifically about a, a confederacy of nations. One of them is has, has links clearly to the Russian people. So you've got, you know, for years, biblical prophecy have, uh, has pointed in that direction. But also in Turkey as well, it also mentions Libya. It also mentions Iran. Now, Iran was actually a an ally of Israel in, the, in a, not long, not way far back, and that has turned as well. So, so all those na- most of those nations are against Israel. But yes, uh, Turkey is so yes, Turkey significant. So is r- certainly Russia. Certainly. Okay, um, a lot of fear about ISIS. Yes, there's something major here. Okay, okay. And, th- and this, <clears throat> the harbingers have not stopped. They've continued. One of the harbingers in the book is the second harbinger is the terrorist or the harbinger of the terror, terrorist. And that is that when this first warning came to Israel, it came through the ancient Assyrians. The Assyrians are the fathers of terrorism. Every terrorist today is linked spiritually to the Assyrians. The Assyrians invented terrorism and they're the ones in, a, in that harbinger scripture. They're the ones who, who that strike came through them. And God allowed, now God's against the terrorists. Clearly, but he allowed it to happen. So one of the signs of an, of danger of judgment is actually in the Bible is terror. And what happened is when 9-11 happened, you had a strike of terror, just as you had back then. And you had people who were linked to the Middle East, all that. But the pattern of the harbinger <laughs> is that that first strike wasn't the last strike. When it happened to Israel, when the Assyrians came in, it wasn't the last they actually would come back even stronger. So I've always wondered, since then, if the Temple of the Harbinger, will it be that there'll be another resurgence of terrorism and concerning America and the West? Well, what has happened is ISIS happened. Now, ISIS is even more linked to the ancient Assyrians than Al-Qaeda. ISIS is it's like it's the reappearance of the second harbinger, uh, I mean, on steroids, in a sense, because ISIS, the, the land of ISIS is Iraq and Assyria. That's their, that's their claim. That's Iraq and Assyria is the core of the Assyrian Empire, the same empire of the Harbinger. They took over Mosul, the city of Mosul. That's Nineveh. That's the same city that plotted the judgment on Israel back then. Not only that, the ancient Assyrians were known for their brutality. They were known for mutilating their victims. Actually, they were known for beheading, beheading their victims. Well, ISIS is, the, is, like the, is like the incarnation of that. Not only that, the ancient Assyrians, not only they, they beheaded for terror, but they broadcast it to everybody. They put it on their stone walls. They showed everybody what they did with their beheadings. ISIS is doing the exact same thing, but through social media, it's the 21st century. So ISIS is like the, I mean, it's amazing how much they are. This is the, this is the reappearance of the second harmony. So it's an ominous thing. And the principle in the Bible is that when Israel turned away from God, they, and they wanted the gods of the, of the Assyrians, they wanted the gods of Babylon. God said, okay, you want that? You're going, to get, you're going to get the full thing. And so the terror was actually a judgment. So the West is now saying, we, we don't want Christianity, we want anything that's anti-Christian. Well, God says, you want anti-Christian? You've got it right now. These terrorists are anti, you, want, you don't want Christianity, you, want, you don't want mercy, you don't want love, you've got it. So interesting thing with, with what, this recent summer and now, the United Nations had several initiatives against Israel. They were all sponsored by France. France. And France is it was saying, Israel saying, don't do this. You know, don't do the Palestine, don't do this. This puts us in danger from Islamic radicals. Well, what happened is Islamic terrorism came to France. You know, so, so I believe it's an ominous thing. And now we're watching it in America. Yeah. We have to, you know, this, this is what the Temple of the Harbinger actually points to. So we have to be very much, very much vigilant watching this. It was a real wake up call yeah. for France and for uh, yeah. the British and for all of that area. Yeah. I think more so than anything that could have happened here in America, don't yeah. you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, this is, you know, this is the very, the, the very same pattern. And, and the fact that now we, we just had one in America. I mean, I mean, this is a, a whole new day and ISIS is more dangerous than Al Qaeda, but this is the pattern. Remember, remember something. I mean, the word harbinger means warning of something to come. And what happened to ancient Israel when the Assyrians first attacked, that was a harbinger of something to come in the future. So this, this is something that we need to come back to God. I mean, right. desperately. Well, you know, and um, it is amazing to me how 
you see so many uh, streams of revival around the world mm -hmm. where God is supernaturally yes. appearing to people yes. and how his grace and mercy is calling for people to come home. Yes. I mean, yes. He, it, as evil abounds, grace That's so right. much more abounds. That's so, right. But at the same time, we can talk about God's grace and mercy and how much he loves all of us and he sent his son for us. That's right. But we still have to look at the warning signs yes. of uh, yeah. people who are willfully yes. sinning against God and uh, the foundational truths that this, that this country was built upon. That's right. Let's talk a little bit about, uh, someone's asking about Syria and Russia's involvement with supporting uh, President Assad. Yes. And here we have now other countries that are coming into Sy Syria along with America. Then you have uh, the rebels and then you, you have so many yes. different groups. Yeah. So what, yeah. do you, what do you feel like is going to happen there? Well, there's, yeah, it's chaos. It's, it's like suddenly things have been destabilized, which is another, actually another link with the Shemitah. It's a destabilization. And that a lot started with Saddam Hussein. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. destabilization. Yeah, and, the, and, and, then, <laughs> and then the Arab Spring, you know, we were saying this is so good, so good. Not really, <laughs> not really this is so good. You've unleashed something. We've, and, and America was part of this too, you know, go, go back to that. You know, when 9-11 when happened, you said, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna solve this this way. You know, this is the pattern. We're gonna do it, but not God. We're gonna, well, what happened is we actually helped to, un, we helped to unleash these things inadvertently. Without God, you can't solve the problem. So things have become worse, actually. And the thing is that, that so there's destabilization. And another thing that happened is in the Middle East is, is on the Temple Mount, Violence broke out recently, and, th and that started this whole thing in Israel and started all these things. Well, the day that, the, I don't even remember this, Joni, but the day that the violence broke out on the Temple Mount, which started this new wave of chaos in the Middle East, happened on Elul 29, the day of the Shemitah, meaning the shaking. You know, so all this has happened there. So, yeah, and I think that this is one of the things that you cannot solve spiritual problems with physical means. We need to, it's God. We need to get right with God. Then, right. then we will not have to worry about the terrorists, you know. But until we, if we keep on defying God and we keep on, we will have to worry about it because he's our protection. No, we were just in Israel and we wanted you to go with us. No, I wanted to. You didn't to. get to go with to. us, <laughs> but maybe next time. But um, back to Syria, I mean, um, Russia, China, yes. all of these big players. And then we, we were right there yeah. uh, looking over where that great battle will take place yeah. that Revelation Armageddon. talks about, Armageddon. So yeah. What, yeah. It, what, yeah. what do you see as far as God's time clock? I know we can't yeah. you know, give dates and, and all of that, but where are we seasonally? Well, one, we one thing is, you know, one of the things this is showing is with all these nations coming in is that America's influence is declining. You would never have that before with all the nations move in like that. There's a vacuum, you know. Um, secondly, you know, this is, you know, this is also a prophetic jubilee year. Now, we won't, will not make prediction about it, but I'll, we'll, we'll get into it. The, it could be very significant because the last time this happened, there was war. Every time this cycle happens, there was war, but it brought about God's purposes and end time purposes. So one, so some of those significant things is we are watching a gigantic, the Bible says that before that day comes, Paul said, they will, it won't happen until there's a great apostasy or falling away. Well, we're watching that. That's prophetically significant. We have to be aware of it. At the same time, we're watching the nations of the world still uh, condemning Israel, coming against Israel, coming in. And we're watching Israel's enemies rise up, rise up all over. So we are, and we are definitely approaching uh, more rapidly. Where the, the apostasy is more rapid, and what's happening in the world, the events are destabilizing. We're almost we're watching like the end of this American-led order of peace. You know, since World War II, it's just breaking down all over, and God is the only answer. So I, things are speeding up all over, including Israel, including Israel. And at the same time, the other side is the revival all over the world. The Bible says the gospel shall be preached. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And that is also happening too. And also Jewish people are coming to the Lord, which also has to happen before the end too. So we're watching yeah. really all these things. Everything the Bible said is everything is moving to that direction. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, a lot of people still asking, uh, I want to hear what uh, Rabbi Khan has to say about the rapture, about okay. the tribulation, okay. Okay. pre, mid, and post. What okay. is your view on all that? I'm, I'm, I'm pan-trib. I believe it's all going to pan out. <laughs> that is a great answer. <laughs> so the that, I mean, you know, without being committal, the point is, listen, the point is either way we have to be two things, you know, 
that we have to be ready for the Lord to come at any moment, to meet the Lord at any moment, and we have to be ready to go through whatever we have to go through. So that's the best of both things. And it's not, we're, I don't believe we're to be fighting over this, you know, that issue. This is not, the Bible doesn't fight over it. But be ready either way, and also, and also be ready to go through as well. Because either way, listen, we're watching, we, talk, we talked about persecution for, for years, but it's happening now. We're watching that now. So whether you go through the tribulation or not, you're going to have to go through things, and we're going to have to be strong for the days ahead. So what do you see on the prophetic time clock that's coming? And again, I think I asked you this earlier. Were you surprised at some of the things that happened in 2015? Or Yeah. Um, I'm, I, th I mean, you never know how things are going to manifest. So how it would be, you know, that, that's one thing. I wasn't surprised about America crossing the line of that fall with with marriage. I mean that that we saw coming. We I saw was it. surprised. I mean, really? I was I was surprised that the Supreme Court would make that ruling based on what the states yeah. had already said that they basically, yeah. you know, um, kind of crossed boundaries that they our founding fathers never intended. Well, you know, yeah, and the, yeah, our founding fathers would, would roll over in their graves. You know, when, when the Shemitah began, within about two weeks of that, the Supreme Court made a decision not to defend, not to defend the defense of marriage. And so with that one act, that uh, this whole Shemitah year has been sweeping down of state laws overturning, overturning until we got to that. The Lord called me to go down to Washington, D.C. I was down there that day when they heard the case, and I just went there to the steps of the Capitol. And there was just a few of God's people there, one with sackcloth on, and, and one, they're just standing as witnesses of God. But I couldn't, I, I was there, and it was the next day, the Lord opened the door for me to speak to, con to members of Congress. I believe there's a reason for that. So I believed it was coming, you know. And, you know, again, Shemitah means fall. So, so all these things, um, all these things, that part didn't surprise me. But, but, but it's accelerating. That, that does surprise me. I mean, and how fast. It did surprise me that when someone was thrown in jail for saying, I can't go along with this, the majority of Americans said, good, throw her in jail. I mean, that was gigantic, you know, good, yeah. evil, and evil, good. Same thing like with um, a couple who owned a small bakery. Yeah. I, they had made cakes and things for a lesbian couple. But when they said, we want you to come do our wedding, they said, we can't. You know, we, can't. we can't. And look what happened to them. They were, they're out of business now. They were given a huge fine. It's crazy. The, yeah. Another thing um, someone mentioned is, and I remember this, Jonathan, my son, Jonathan, yeah. sent me, I, I believe, the picture of this. And maybe you can explain. A lot of viewers may not even know this, but the Goddess Cali. Oh, okay, okay. Let me on tell. On the Empire State Building. Yes, yes. What are we? What is yes, this? Yes, Joni. There are there are three abominations that bring judgment, that brought judgment to Israel, and we touched on one of them. But let me let me say this one here. One of the abominations in the Hebrew in the Hebrew language, the word for abomination shikutz also means idol. Same word. That's when you look in the Revelation, the abomination desolation is an idol false gods when when images of false gods appeared in the land what happened when that happened that was a sign of judgment coming this summer was the summer of marriage it was the summer actually when it came out that we're we are actually selling the aborted baby parts i mean this is the another abomination israel was judged for for the for the destruction of its children and then this the last one this summer, all of a sudden in New York City, where we are, the image of this false god, abomination, this has to be, this has to be the largest image of a false god in the history of the planet Earth. Has to be. This is just her face on a... Kali is the god, actually is the god of darkness. And now how did they do that? They projected light, all sorts of projectors, onto the Empire State Building. So they used light to produce darkness. The Bible says, woe to those who put light for darkness, literally on that. Kali is also the goddess of death and destruction. So here over New York City comes the god of death and destruction. Why? Who did that? What was the it, reason it is, for you know what? It's like You know what? It's like the harbingers that you say, why do they people, why, why do people pr pronounce judgment? Why do they do it? It's like they have to do it, and they don't know what they're doing, but they, they don't know why they're doing it. This had something to do with the fact that they were saying, well, you know, we have to protect the earth from global warming or, or, oh or ecology, you know, the, the ecological things. So, well, they say, so we're, we're appointing Kali as our protector. 
Kali as our protector. Kali is the goddess of it. You know, her, if you look at that, that image, her, her, you see her tongue out. It's dripping with blood from destruction. She's the destroyer put over America, put over New York City. That, if that's not a harbinger, what is? So we don't know who did this? It was some, some ecology thing celebrating Mother Earth and then, and then appointing Kali as the protector. And so when did this happen? I know when. This, was, this happened this, the same summer of all these things, basically abominations. It happened in August. And it happened also, they, now I don't think they planned this, it happened right during the celebration, Kali's cele appointed celebration in India at the same time it appeared over America. And God says, you know, you go after these gods, you, you turn away from me, and what do you turn to? You turn to destruction, you turn to death, you turn to things that are not going to bless you. They're going to come back at you. So the, here it is, the other abomination. It was interesting when we just heard the news about the, the terrible shooting that took place in San Bernardino, California by two radical Islamic, a couple, yes. a married couple who had a six month old child. Yes. It's unbelievable. But it was interesting to watch the evolution of that story because yes. it's like no one wanted to say that they were radical, you know, Islam, yes. you know, that that was involved in it. Yeah. But the story is now coming out pretty clear that oh, that's yeah. what's happening. And yes. how many others have been thwarted and how many are yes. still planning something here in America. Yeah, this was, the, you know, the woman had pledged herself to ISIS. So even ISIS is part of this. They were, it was total, you know, at the beginning, the president said, well, we don't know it's, it's terrorism. Well, it is terrorism. And interesting, interesting, the guy, as you probably know from the story, he's got into a thing with a Messianic Jew, you know, someone who was, who was standing for the Bible, you know, in, yeah. the, in the midst of this. But yeah, and that, but, if, but if you look, Joni, this is, this, I mean, it's like amazing. Everything's in the Bible because this pattern is exactly what happened to Israel. As they turn from, he says, you're turning from your, your protection, your strength. You're turning from me. I'm here to save you. And what's going to happen is your enemies are going to come. The things you're going after, you're turning, you're going for everything that's anti me. It's going to come home to you. And that is absolutely one of the signs of that. Absolutely. It's like we're being bombarded by it. Yeah. Bombarded by it. There's a roll in that you brought and uh, we want to show that. Could you set that up yes. for our audience? This is this is when I this is when the Lord opened the door for me to go to Washington. I wasn't planning it, but it turned out to be the day that the Supreme Court heard the you know, was gonna decide the case. Wow. And and it was the next day I'm speaking in on you know, in the Capitol, speaking to members of Congress and leaders, and actually this 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 door opened because of the harbinger. There's prayer in, in the Capitol because someone told me to talk about the harbinger and said, we got to take the prayer into there. So I spoke and I knew it was prophetic. I knew I had to, I could not hold back. We can't hold back, Joni. And so I, I spoke about this. I don't know if you'll see this at the beginning, but actually I spoke to the president and said, you know, how can, you know, if you do this, you put your hand on the Bible and with your other hand, you enact laws against the Bible. How can you do that without invoking judgment? So yeah. this is from the, this is a little bit of that, that speech um, or that message. And that is, um, and somebody put some images to it, but it's the actual live speech. Okay, let's watch this. As Elijah stood on top of Mount Carmel and cried out to Israel in his hour of decision in between two altars and two gods, his voice now cries out to America and says, choose you this day whom you will serve. 70 years ago, the chaplain of the United States Senate cried out with the same voice, and said to this nation, if the Lord be God, then follow him. But if Baal, then follow him and go to hell. Tonight, America stands at the crossroads. And as Elijah came to the summit of Mount Carmel to make a declaration, we've come this night to Capitol Hill to declare that our God is not Baal, our God is not Moloch, our God is not government, our God is not money, our God is not power, not pleasure, our God is not political correctness, or any other man-made thing. We come to this hill to declare that there is only one God, and he is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's the God of Israel and of all nations. He alone is the rock upon which this nation has come into existence. And from this high place, we make this declaration. We will not bow down our knees to Baal. We will not bow down our knees to political correctness. We will not bow down our knees to a morality that is as shifting as sand in the wind. We will not bow down our knees to the laws and precepts of rebellion or the sacred cows of moral apostasy. 
We will not bow down our knees to the idols of man. We will bow down our knees only to the Lord our God, come what may, and we will have no other gods before him. For some trust in chariots, some trust in princes, some trust in Supreme Court, some trust in White Houses, some trust in governments, some trust in Wall Street, some trust in powers, and some trust in idols. But we will trust in the name of the Lord our God, in the name above all names, above all kings, above all powers. We will trust in the only name given by which we can be saved. We will trust to the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, the King of all kings, the Lord of all lords, the judge of all judges, the light of the world, the glory of Israel, the foundation stone upon which this nation came into existence, and the only answer, the only chance, and the only hope that America has that it might once again shine with the light of the fire of the presence of the glory of the living God and not go to hell, so help us God. Wow, that was amazing. I'll tell you what, church, we have to stand up and we have to shine the light in the darkness. We have to be empowered by the Holy Spirit, be led by the Spirit of God, share the love of God, take as many people with us as we can to heaven and understand that we are living in very perilous times. But we need not fear because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Jonathan, will you pray for us sure. as we leave the air today? Thank you so sure. much for being oh, here today. My blessing. Lord, bless and bless all these and bless everyone watching. Have your way. Lord, strengthen them, encourage them. The Lord bless you, keep you, cause his face to shine upon you, fill you with his grace, lift up the glory of his countenance on you, and give you shalom, life, fullness, peace, Bashem Yeshua. Jesus, the Messiah, light of the world, the hope of Israel. Amen. Open up to the Song of Solomon. The Song of Solomon. And... We will find this here. And I want you to find in here the verse which is, at the end, a beautiful verse, Song of Solomon 6, verse 10. Beautiful verse. You got it. A beautiful mystery this morning and a beautiful ah the lord is beautiful and his word is beautiful here and it's going to be something that is very spiritual and very um just of the spirit the way this is here and if you just read it over you might miss it but i want you to see this look at verse 10 who is this that grows like the dawn as beautiful as the moon, as pure as the sun, as awesome as an army with banners. Who is this who grows like the dawn, is as beautiful as the moon, and is as pure as the sun? Now what it's talking about is the bride. This is a love song of the Bible, and it is a book that is not just about a man and a woman, it is about God and us. God is the bridegroom, we are the bride, or we are the people who are waiting to be the bride. Our whole heart and being is waiting to find God, and if it doesn't find God, it's empty and always trying to find something else to fill that because we are all made to be his bride. Meaning, whether you're man or woman, that's not the point. Meaning we're meant to be joined to God and married to him forever. That's salvation. So this is a description of the bride. And it's a beautiful thing here. We did a teaching, I did a teaching way back, or pretty way back, called She Like the Dawn. I did another one called She Like the Moon. Now, we're going to see the whole thing come together because there is a progression here. It is the dawn, the moon, and the sun. Who is the bride? She is like the dawn, she is like the moon, she is like the sun in that order. 
the dawn, the moon, and the sun, which is what this is called. And to see this, this picture of the journey that we're on and the, 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 tr the transformation that is coming. Mizotz ha nishkafa kamo shachar. Who is this? The NIV translation says, Who is this who appears like the dawn? The NAS says, Who is this that grows like the dawn? The New King James says, Who is she who looks forth as the morning? The reason why you have different things here is the word in Hebrew is shakaf, which means to lean out a window, like you're peering out a window. You're looking out. Something's happening outside. You're looking out. It means to gaze, to peep, to peek, to look out to look down. Now what does that have to do with the dawn? Well the dawn, the reason why it's like the dawn is because the dawn kind of breaks through, like they're picturing it like the dawn kind of breaking through, like through a little window, peeking through, the sun coming up, and then breaking through. So who is she? The bride is like the dawn. She is expectant. She's looking out a window. She is early. She is rising. The nature of the bride first is to be like the dawn. Why? You peer out a window. You're glowing. The dawn glows. When you're in love, you glow. So in his love, you are to have a glow. But it's a light. The, the light of the dawn is not just a light. It's a growing light. The light of the dawn is a light that starts real small and starts growing. So the dawn, so our light is supposed to be that which is growing, continuously growing, or else there's something not right. We're to be growing in the Lord. The dawn is steadily increasing in brightness, steadily. The dawn is a new beginning, so we are to be of a new, people who are of a new beginning. That's why you must be born again. That's why the new birth, it's not just once, we live in that power of newness every day. Continually brighter. So the dawn also is the light that ends the night. The dawn is the light that breaks the night. And so the light that you have in your life is the light that is to break night. There's night going around you, you break it. You have the power to break it. The dawn, is to, there's, there's the night of this gloom, you break it. You have the power to break that. Because you're the dawn, you have, she's like the dawn, you're like the dawn. You're supposed to be like the dawn to your family. A new beginning, a, a fresh air, a light where there was darkness. The nature of the dawn is to break these things darkness is so you have that power the nature of the dawn is to wake up people so you are to be a person who wakes up people your presence your light is to wake them up and some people will say I'll oh, turn that off I want to keep sleeping but you are to keep shining the bride is like the dawn so this is a picture of us coming to the Lord like a little pe little thing you know it starts out little then it, it peeks through it breaks the door breaks it and then it gets stronger and stronger. That's the way it's supposed to be. Who is this who grows like the dawn? But then it moves from the dawn to the moon. And now we're going to see a beautiful flow. The dawn to the moon. Progression. First, who is this who is like the dawn? Peeking out a window. The bride begins looking out the window. Faith. Looking out. And that's, that's, that's how it starts. You're like in your life. You're like in a room. And your life is like whatever. And then this little thing comes through. This light comes through. And you start looking out. There's something more to life than this room. You know? And that's true even now. No matter what your problem is, that's just your room. The window. You know, the heavens are still there. The room is just a little thing. Corey Ten Boon, when uh, she was in concentration camp for her faith, she was put in a little room, and there were there was these bars. There was nothing in there. It was cold, and just but there's a little bar there. I'm just, I mean, bars across this little slit. And but she would just stare at that. She would just look through the because through that she could see the heavens. So it doesn't matter where you are. And so no matter what, the bride is someone who always peeks out in hope. Doesn't matter what's around them. She always looks for the window. Always looks for the window. She's looking out. So the per first picture is someone who's looking out of their life, out of their circumstance, peeking out. But the moon is out there already. First she's looking out, like there's no peeking, but then the moon is out in the heavens. So the first thing is that she's looking to the heavens, but then she is dwelling in the heavens. She's now like the moon. 
She's now not just looking at the heavens, she's dwelling in the heavenlies. And that's what the scripture says. What does it say? It says your life, if you're really, if you're in God, you move deeper in God, you are in the heavenlies. You are seated in the heavenlies. It is not an earth-based life. It is a heaven-based life. And so there's a big difference between looking at heaven, and that's good, but there's a big difference between living from heaven. It is a heavenly-based life. It's okay. Uh, the regular mic. Okay. I don't know where the regular mic is. Oh, okay. The enemy's not going to stop the message. He never, never will. Even if we didn't have sound, it would still, I would just have to shout. That's how I used to uh, do it. Yeah, two things went down today. Two, two, two wireless mics went down. So must be that God wants you to hear this. All right, where there's opposition, there's a good thing. All right, so the first thing, get this, the first thing is that, and that is that it is the difference between God is not saying just look up to heaven. He's saying look down from heaven. When you grow deeper in God, you are to dwell from heaven. It is the, it, the, the prayer is on earth as it is in heaven. Not, 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 our main thing is not trying to get to heaven. If you're saved, you're already, you've got to heaven. I mean, you'll be there later in that, but, but you are already to be there in spirit. And so you are to look at your life, look down on your life in the sense that I'm looking from beyond the problem, above the problem. I am dwelling in the presence of God, and I am relating not to God. I'm not relating with my problem to God. I am relating with God to the world and to my problem. Big difference. Big difference. I am now in the heavenlies like she is like the moon. She's looking down on the earth. Things are going on, but her life is in the heavenlies. And that's a great secret. But you have to dwell in the heavenlies. You want to be in the heavenlies? You have to dwell in the heavenlies. How? When you, are, when you go home, you get alone with the Lord and start dwelling in the heavenlies. Live from heaven to earth. Big secret. Still hard. Still ra 